Hi everyone, I'm going to continue the series of the Dafyomi. We are concentrating on page 59 of Masechet Nedarin. That is Daf Nun Tet, respectively. So here we're going to continue today. And yesterday we learned all about this, the distinct, distinction between things that are considered a Dabar Shish Lomatirim. That was, respectively, something that is forbidden today but will become permitted at a later stage. And there was something else called a Dabar She'ein something that is forbidden forever at uh, any point in time. And in the latter concept, we learned, in the latter case, the concept of a bittel, something, the word bittel means nullification in Hebrew. And uh, it's referring to over here, of a uh, nullification, when you mix together a larger volume of a permitted food. Where, say for example, where the example I used yesterday, where drops of milk falls inside a big meat stew pot and then it gets nullified within 60 of it it's going to continue its status of its meat dish halakhically as long as it's not like a strong milk uh, droplets which is this 60th respectively so that's something we looked at yesterday and we said that since it becomes permissible with the passage of time there is no pressing reason to employ the rules of nullification in that case so the Gemara is going to deal with various different questions in today's uh, Talmud. And one of the questions it's going to deal with, would grapple with, is going to be whether something that is forbidden because of a vow can be considered a Davash Shishlomatirim on the basis of the fact that a person can undo the vow by consulting with the rabbi. He can ask the rabbi if it can be null and void, as we've learned within the laws of the Nedarim, respectively, throughout this thing. And can question that the assumption that he made while taking this neder, this specific vow, was a method referred to by the Gemara as being a, something called sho'el, where you can ask about it. The word sho'el means a sha'ila in Hebrew, means to ask a question on the neder itself, that someone can actually pose that question on the nether itself, respectively. So what will the, how will the Gemara look into this? Well, the Gemara considers the possibility that a nether should be considered davash yesh lo matirin, like there should be, uh, it's going to be permissible in another way. It is clear that, for example, we gave the example of turuma. That is not, that the, the case of turuma, tithing, is not considered a davash yesh matirin, even though, if a person believes that the produce was tithed, even if by mistaken error in one shape or form, he can go to the rabbi and be sho'el on the tithing. He can actually ask a question within regards to the tithing itself. That well, there was an error. And the Gemara, the Talmud also distinguishes between the two by quoting, there was a rabbi named Rabbi Natan, Nathan, Rabbi Nathan. And he ruled, he paskined, that someone who takes a neder, someone that's a, it's going to take a vow upon itself. It's compared to a person who builds a forbidden altar, a uh, asur mizbeach, mizbeach asur. And they also equate that someone that fulfills the nether, that uh, uh, respects the nether itself respectively, it is as though he has brought a, a sacrifice, uh, has brought a uh, forbidden sacrifice onto it. That's a great level of it. So someone who fulfills the nether is thought as it is brought in a forbidden sacrifice on it. Very astounding and a shocking uh, statement here. Thus, in effect, Rabbi Nata, Nathan, is considering it a mitzvah to annul one's vow. That's what he's considering. While it's certainly not recommended for a person to annul his tithes at the same time. So Rashi, the commentator of the Gemara, who is all over all the different Talmud states, Rashi actually states, explained, that in the case of Nedarim, when we're talking about the topic of vows in the Torah, even though the vow is still in force, it's still in effect, it is a mitzvah to be sho'el, uh, to ask about it, to consult a rabbi within regard to even to annul it. So since it is a mitzvah to be sho'el, we consider it as though it had already been annulled at that stage in time. And the Rosh, as the commentator of the Rosh, he understands the reasoning as being that we work with the assumption that the neder will be annulled, so we consider it as a davash yishlomatirim. At this stage, uh, sorry, it, it, we will consider it as a davash yishlomatirim. That it's going to be something permissible later on. So today we're talking about annulling vows, you know, within regards to the cases. When we uh, want to, uh, we've made a vow upon something, it's going to be, it's forbidden upon a person because you made that vow, but you can get out of it by being asking the rabbi 
within regards to a different way to finding a petach to come out of this vow and to get it null and avoid. And there was a famous case many years ago, a tumult in Israel. There was where there was a, uh, I think it was, there was Rabbi Eliashiv in Israel was asked the question, what if some, a chair had uh, something muksa on it and it got mixed up with other chairs? Will you be allowed to use these, this happened on Shabbat? Would this, or you'll be allowed to use any of the chairs? Because technically it's the Davar Shish material. They all got mixed in together. So uh, that was something the rabbi grappled with and it became a big uh, famous uh, topic in Israel, I believe, more than 15 years back. So the topic is the Davar Shish material. We are discussing page Nun Tet in the Gemara today, respectively. And uh, it's very, very interesting and astounding. Guys, I want to wish you all an awesome day here live from Israel. And look into the duff even more, the page. Have a great day, guys. Bye.